T T B Music Podcast. Evening. I was just enjoying the theme tune for the hundredth time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. One of my best works. Yeah, it's, it's brilliant. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Podcast 2, 2017. And for your delectation, we have the new album from Elbow, Little Fictions. Alison Crutchfield, Tourist in This Town. Uh, Brent Cash, The New High. Sampha, Process. Horse Thief, Trials and Truth. And finally, Big Wreck, Grace Street. However, we shall start with the uh, seventh studio album from wow. uh, the band from Round Your Way. Uh, and the third album of theirs we've actually done on the podcast. Really? Yeah. On the chart, really? Uh, yeah, because we, we uh, built a Rocket Boys. That's the one. It was 2011. 2011, yeah. Uh, which we both liked. Yeah. And then there was the taking off of whatever it was. Taking off and landing of... That's the one, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which I think was 2014. Yeah. Which... I you, think I preferred. Yeah, you quite liked. Yeah. Uh, and I was a bit kind of... Meh, yeah. on. Um, so, our third run for the elbow, Little Fictions. Mm. Is this a yeah or a meh? It's all right. It's, it's all right. Yeah. Um, I'm yet to, to sort of feel the full impact, I think, of this album. Yeah. Um, it does take repeated listenings and on repeated listenings there are just little new things I keep hearing here and there yeah um, they've done a brilliant combination I think of what they did on the last album which was they started to move back towards the sort of the sort of anthemic rock mm. of, um, of, of, of of previous previous albums but have yet kept that sort of jazz restraint on it mm-hmm. if that makes sense mm-hmm. so uh, I, th- I think I think it's a really balanced record and I think it's one that will will reward throughout the year I can see this ending up in various lists of course yeah. at the end of the year um, I can see it ending up in mine I'm just not quite sure where yet yeah, yeah. bit early bit early <laughs> bit early <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no no it's a, yeah I, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a strong it's a strong record uh, I'm I, I'm similar I suppose in some some, some ways I'm equally yet to totally warm to it although I do there are a couple of tracks that are um, stand out to me mm. um, opening track yeah Gibson she says all disco and head for supplies particularly mm. are ones that uh, appeal to me the most on the first few listens I've had um, which I can't say for Gentle Storm which is the second track which is just tedious rubbish it, it, it's quiet it's just mm. It's the same. It's, yeah. it's the same looped yeah. thing over. So, uh, yeah. And there's quite a lot. There's quite a lot of looped um, music within the album. It, it's and re- sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. And I think on Gentle Storm, mm. it's just. It, I had I literally the third time I was listening to the album today. Uh, I got a minute into Gentle Storm, and I just skipped to the track three because it was doing my head in. I, I I think that that loop sound is very uh, reminiscent of. Build a Rocket Boys, which I didn't. I also remember not really warming to, and I'd say subsequently haven't really listened to much in the intervening. Years. Well, so I listened to it last night, and it's it? and it's it's, it's, it's oh, it's much better. Than it's much better now. Oh, no, 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 okay, okay, so that's worth that's worth bearing in mind. Um, but again, that Rat album seemed like a very quiet, um, particularly after the the, the bombast of Seldom Seen Kid yeah. a few years before. No. Which this isn't. No. So, Little Fictions is perhaps a little grower. A little or grower. <laughs> perhaps not. <laughs> Do you know what? We'll, we'll be raving about this by the end of the year. <laughs> be one of those. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Uh, moving on uh, to the um, debut album from Alison Crutchfield, Torch in This Town. Um, Alison Crutchfield is the twin sister of Katie Crutchfield, who we've reviewed on this podcast before uh, under her guise of Waxahachie, um, which <laughs> a couple of years ago I think it was, Ivy Trip the album was called, oh, yeah. uh, it was quite light, well. um, 
And this album is, I think, very much a kind of in that kind of belly breeders, mm. bone justice mm. type of. Um, although bizarrely, it starts off with this kind of lovely a cappella kind of choral kind of thing going yeah. on. Got very kind of Beach Boysy before it kind of goes into that kind of slightly more indie thing on on the, the first track, Broad Daylight. Uh, it's, a, it's a kind of breakup record, I guess. Oh, um, yeah. um, seemingly to do both with the kind of breakup of a relationship with um, her lover and co-writer, who was also in a band with her, and then subsequently, obviously, the breakup of the band. Um, and I think there's some interesting. Uh, interesting l lyrics around that kind of topic contained in the album um, quite a lot of it's kind of very much kind of yeah, admitting that she fucked up as much as anybody, anybody else mm. um, but uh, there's also a song where one of the lines I think it's in um, is it Miles Away and she goes you assume to under understand because your voice is the loudest which I think is a quite nice thing it's kind of mm. like you know it's like yeah I'm right because I'm speaking louder than you are. Yes. Kind of thing in a relationship, which you know, we've all been there, done that. Uh, and the other line that I really like in on "I Don't Want to Leave California," which is one of the standout tracks mm. on, on the album, uh, is the line I keep confusing love and nostalgia, which I also think is quite a sweet line. Um, and it's quite a short album, and I think uh, at the first half of it, it, in general, is better than the second half. But it's it's you know it's it's I'm going to use the word it's quite a solid <laughs> album. It's, it's, no, it's, it's a it's a light enjoyable record. It's not going to set the world alight, but it's yeah it's fine. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I completely agree. Um, uh, this this really was a grower. Yeah, and um, you're right. That first track's a bit of uh, um, it's 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 a bit of a trick really because the rest of the album's not like that at all. Um, so you think I thought I was getting into one thing, and then actually I get into something else. Yeah, uh, which is which is fine, uh, which is more than fine, in fact. Um, and I particularly liked when we talked about the lyrics. There's some really clever lyrics throughout throughout the album. Uh, I particularly liked the song Dean's Room. Mm. Um, I was a, sort of a real sort of jangly, as you say. It's that kind of that kind of breeders era um, vocal, almost pop music. Yeah. Um, so I, I really enjoyed really enjoyed that track. Um, so it, yeah, yeah, this is the definite definitely a grower. Um, it can marry the sort of the, 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 the kind of the pop and the, the bit folks as well. So yeah, all in all, a solid package. A solid package. Mm, mm. I like it. Yeah. See, I'm evolving, evolving the language. Yeah. Uh, right, we now turn the <laughs> clock back to uh, the early seventies. I think it's safe to say. Yes. Um, uh, <laughs> With a gentleman called Brent Cash and his third album, I think this is the first on a major major label. First two being uh, uh, self released mm -hmm. affairs. Um, but yeah, as I said, definitely an early seventies vibe going on here, ever so slightly. Yeah. Um, and again, um, I really enjoyed. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it again on second second listen. Um, uh, for for me, this one. Was uh, it, it, the, the album? I, listened, I won't spoil it. Album I listened to before, I really struggled with. So actually, this this when this came out, it was a, quite a refreshing, yeah, sort of take on on I think what the album before was kind of trying to do. I I, I think I'm really ris missing decent rock music or music with yeah. guitars, um, and and keep coming across it. And it's not it's not done quite well, or it doesn't quite hit have impact. Whereas this. It was just it was just a fresh I mean yes, seventies, but kind of a very fresh sounding seventies record. You know, like something that Lane undiscovered for so long and, and 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 put out there. Um Standout Tracks, well, this really was a solid record for me. I can't yeah. I can't pick anything in particular on this one. Um but I, again I think this is a it's a grower. Yeah, it's it's it's, it is, uh, it's a curious record in lots mm. of ways because it is it is one of those records that I I kind of put on and a couple of tracks in I'm thinking, yes, it's kind of like it's ch channeling kind of the Carpenters and Carol King and yeah. Gilbert O'Sullivan yeah. and and dare I say it, early 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 Mr. Rungren too. And it's it's and it's mm. it's <laughs> and I think some of it works for me. Some of it worked better than 
others. I, th I think the kind of shtick um, kind of wore a bit thin for me over the over the, over the course of yeah, course like of the long, album. Long. Yes, and it's not a long it's album. It's not how long it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, there are tracks on it that, that did, stand, did stand out for me and I like. So every, I think every inflection, uh, which is one of the shorter tracks, um, uh, the Edge of Autumn as well, which is a really great, great song. Uh, at the end, he actually picks up an acoustic guitar because most of it is a piano-based, mm. very much piano-based record. Um, for Perfection comes near at the end, which I also thought was quite, yeah. quite a nice little song. Um, but yeah, certainly a kind of nice, mellow, relaxing kind yeah. of. Chilling kind of record, more of a summer record than a yeah, winter record, yeah, though, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For this one. So moving on, we move on oh, to yeah, on. we are. <laughs> we move on to the uh, unbelievably the debut album from Samtha, uh, who, as well. who we covered when he was uh, in. Uh, yeah. he, came, he came third, I think, in the BBC Sound of twenty fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah. Crikey. The year Sam Smith won it. I thought 15, but wow. Or did, or, did, or did Sam Smith win it? I can't remember Sam with him, or was the other woman? Eddie that's Golding? It? No. No, that's before then. Uh, well, anyway. No, because there was the Sam Smith, yeah. the one that had George Ezra in it. Yeah, well, that's right. And, um, Gosh. Wow. Yeah. So it's taken Just wow. a while for yeah. the debut album to uh, ah. um, appear. Um, and I've... I've yeah, I, remember, I kind of had to think back about what we kind of thought about him at the at the time when the uh, we were reviewing him back then. Uh, so much so, I actually listened back to what we said. Uh, <laughs> I don't do this very often, Deep kids. Breath. Yeah, <laughs> and I absolutely raved about. Did you uh, about that? Sam, Sam, Sam right. um, and and yeah, because the EP sounds very very Rundgren-esque. Ah. Uh, something I have to say. Yeah. Something, yeah, something I have to say is not totally lost on this album either, because yeah, yeah, yeah. because the second last track on this re record, "Incomplete Kisses," uh, has a very Rundgren-esque kind of yeah. uh, synth going on. Into it. Yeah, this is this is starting to ring a yeah. very distant bell. With me. So when I heard that, yeah. you know, I think the only thing that could possibly go wrong there is the fact that I listen to this album, kind of go, "God, this is crap." Right. No. Um, but actually, no, I. Just the album, I thought this is a good record. Yeah. Um, very much a it's a very smart it's kind of a sparse, quirky soul record, I guess. Um, but when I say sparse, well, it's kind of simplistic, but not simplistic at all. It's it's very inventive um, and fresh sounding. So that makes it sound like someone said I'm trying to get down with the kids. It's very fresh sounding. Yeah. Uh, but it is very fresh sounding. Um, so even from from the opening trap, plastic, one hundred degrees, through to which is kind of very, um, kind of evocative sounds going going on in the kind of back background of the main main piece, which just kind of kind of draws you in. Straight through the al album to kind of the piano piano ballad, uh, no one knows me like my like like the piano, which is a very very simple song written for his his mother, and basically Harry kind of got into. Discovering his personality through playing the piano, kind of thing, mm. and it's just a. You know, there, isn't, there really isn't a dud track on this album for me. Yeah. It's a really good songs, good lyrics, uh, even the the co-writing by Kanye on Timmy's Prayer can't ruin the album. <laughs> um, a good song, in fact. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I I am very pleased because this 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 album for me delivers on that promise that uh, I thought he had back in 2014. It, it just goes to show that, you know, success may not always be immediate, but, but actually when it comes, it's, 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 it's well deserved in some cases. Um, I, this for me, probably the album of the podcast in terms of it's the only one we've listened to this month that had an immediate impact on me and was actually really interesting yeah. as well um, in that, it, it it isn't um it isn't it isn't a hip hop album, but it certainly is hip hop influence. It's not a soul album, but he's certainly a very soulful singer. Yeah. Um so for me that sort of marriage of of different strains of different genres of ooze ooze <laughs> oovers as, as you mentioned earlier. I like an earth. Um 
it, it just really, it, yeah, it just really, I was just really impressed by it. And, 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 um, I mean, it's not, I mean, <laughs> I did read with amusement somewhere that, uh, you know, part of his, Boyd, part of his success and sort of training as an artist and, and what have you and, and experience, um, that came when, when Drake, our old friend, Yes, he has. He has put on his Drake album as well. Yeah, yeah, got some of his tunes. And do you know what? I, th I think I've said this before. I think I've said it before more than once. There's some very. If you listen to hip hop music these days, there's some very interesting stuff happening in the background. Yeah. And this guy's clearly a, a genius when it comes to the, the background, but he has a really great voice to boot. Yeah. As well. A really interesting voice as well. Yeah, so it's not yeah. kind of just a. Uh, so he's not of, he's not just a, a guy twiddling the knobs and playing the piano. He's 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 got the talent. The real deal. The real deal, indeed. So uh, yeah, no, for me this 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 was probably the best of the, the selection this month. Uh, I would agree. I'll probably skip to the end there. <laughs> yeah. In fact, why don't we? <laughs> <laughs> no, because I, I I like one of the, one of the two albums we've got Go left. On, then. <laughs> Next up, yeah. uh, there's the uh, second album from American band Horse Thief, yeah. uh, Trials and Truth, uh, indie, yeah. well, American indie, American indie, yeah. All right, I can, I can, I can, I can concede. Um, yeah, that, this one was all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's, it, that sort of. I want to call it Americana, but it's it's not really, is it? It's like American indie. Yeah, we'll go with that. Um, yeah, it, it's, all, it's it's an interesting, it's a solid album. But to be quite honest with you, having listened to it a couple of times, I can't, I can't process it. I can't really say anything sort of either really negative or really positive. That's the third listen did for me on this one. Is it third? Yeah, the magic three with this yeah. one. I did suspect as much. I thought I was I regret not having time for this one. Uh, so I quite I, I quite like this record. So yeah. I took to this quite well. This, this, this is possibly my second favourite album of the, my the podcast. All right. Um, <laughs> hey, let's see you after class. <laughs> <laughs> Reminded me a lot of uh, Shearwater, actually. Yeah, yeah. Reviewed before. Um, it has that kind of thing, and also at times it was, there were a couple of tracks where where it was almost like American version of the Verve. The Verve. Mm. Uh, uh, which is obviously an interesting concept in itself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Slightly less pompous, but yeah, oh, no, <laughs> slightly <laughs> not hard. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I, I thought this was a, this was a, a quite a pleasant surprise, quite a strong kind of uh, American indie album of, of of kind of sheer water kind of type. Uh, uh, first half of the album particularly strong. Yeah, uh, so well worth checking out if you yeah. if you're fans of sheer water particularly. Okay. Um, so we finish. Peter takes note. We finish with the seventy minutes of Big it? Rex. Uh, fifth album, Grace Street, mm -hmm. and uh, I want to read something briefly here before I go on. Um, you because listen to when there's reading involved. <laughs> yeah, this is this is from the Wikipedia entry about about the, about the album. Uh, it's from the, the making of Grace Street. Uh. It says the album also features a number of different recording techniques and the use of instruments and equipment such as wine glasses tuned with a turkey baster, Ian Thorny's daughter daughter Sophia's heartbeat for a kick drum, and a guitar solo recorded on a mountainside with a microphone placed far away from the amplifiers. <laughs> Don't really need to review the album after that, do we, really? Um, I think that just tells you what you need to know. Yeah, that, that kind of sets the, sets the uh, tone for this record. Um, uh, and, it, and it comes as no surprise, is the opening track. Uh, <laughs> and it will come as no surprise that, that the opening track, you kind of go, fuck me, it's Muse. <laughs> And, and, that, that, yeah. and let's be honest, yeah. you don't really want to be feeling that many part record on. No. Um, and, but the worst bit about this record is the fact that that's not the worst bit about the, the record, because it then kind of veers off suddenly. So you get the second track, One Good Piece of Me, which is a, a quite wonderful slice of kind of late 80s AOR kind of police mm. type pop rock. Foot tapping, sing alongy stuff, and you can go, oh, that's quite nice, that's quite yeah. fun. And then there uh, it goes again. Um, you go back to the to the uh, them wanting to be muse, mm. um, and get you up. Know, it's 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 what it's 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 all, it's all right. But the thing is, it's it's seventy minutes long, and any album doesn't matter who it's by, 
that's 70 minutes long needs to be really fucking good. <laughs> because otherwise, you know, there's, there's, there's no room to move it. And this, you get halfway through this album and you're just thinking, my God, I'm only halfway through this yeah. album. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's albums like this when I, I find myself checking the track listing independently just to be sure I haven't like you're not listening to the deluxe I'm version not to the deluxe edition or something you know yes now this is just the normal version and you know it's a, it's a, it's a quite nice instrument, instrumental toward, towards the end uh, which, is, which is all right and um, bizarrely I, I was fed up by then uh, yeah <laughs> well I listened to it on its own ah, yeah, it sounded, I was, yeah. if this had been near the start I'd have probably listened to it and actually the other really long track on it A Speedy Recovery mm. uh, track 6 is actually one of the better tracks on the album as well mm. surprisingly um, yeah but yeah it's just it's, it's too long yeah it's, it's, too, it's too long and yeah, I don't think we'll be reviewing I, the sixth album. <laughs> I, saw, I saw it. I saw it described as soft grunge or post grunge, or I was just like, Ugh. no, 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 soft muse, soft muse. I mean, I mean, muse, fair enough, but soft, soft muse, and uh, it, it just, it just, it's as you say, it, it's that it, it feels like, and uh, let's be honest, I've never really come across this band before. Um, probably won't listen to them again. <laughs> And yeah, I think it's safe to say. And I think it's safe to say that you get to your fifth album and you're recording up mountains with a microphone a long way away from the amplifier. You, the ideas are getting a bit, a bit slack. Although I will say, just for a, 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 a kind of interesting point, his voice did remind me quite a lot of um, Colin Hay in Men at Work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who has since become a country artist, but there you go. One of those things. <laughs> the world kids it is yeah anyway that was one of our fastest podcasts ever that shows you how, how engaged we were in most of these records well you know it, it's um it, it I, I found i found that uh it's uh it's an odd time of year it is it's always a difficult time of year this one <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of that this year i think what do you think yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah there was one thing about 2016 despite all the madness and horrible things elsewhere uh, at least the music was good Anyway, that's the end. That's the end of us that's for now. It. That's all I've got to say. That's the, that's the good news. <laughs> a mere twenty minutes of your time. Yeah. All right, uh, join us again next time when uh, we will probably be reviewing the new Ryan Adams album, amongst other things. Yay! Um, see, so, that's what I'm talking about. See you then. <laughs>